All right, winding down. Um, this is probably the third uh, video of the last 10 I'll be posting on this channel. Um, in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to answer a question, and this question is, uh, oh, by the way, a lot of you, as I've said before in other videos, you've really been nice about this missing tooth right here. Um, you know, no really, not a whole lot of snide remarks about time somebody punched you in the mouth. Um, loose tooth that comes from uh, taking some shots in the mouth and not wearing mouthpieces. I recommend you get a good mouthpiece. Um, if you can't afford a custom mouthpiece, uh, you know, take your mouthpiece, a plastic mouthpiece, whatever, and you guys know how to do it. Uh, guys and gals know how to do it. Uh, <clears throat> you melt uh, your mouthpiece and then mold it, bite into it, and mold it to your teeth, right? All right, so eventually I'll get a, um, a partial and you won't have to see this snaggle tooth look right here, okay? But you guys have been nice and I appreciate it. Uh, in this video, I'm going to answer a question. The question is, how can I take my sport, uh, martial art, and make it more street worthy? Okay, so um, the first thing you have to do is come to grips with what it is you want to do. Okay, that's the first thing you need to do. You need to come to grips with what it is you want to do. Um, the biggest problem, the biggest problem that I see on social media when it comes down to the martial arts, right, is trying to shape violence to fit your martial art, okay? And I'm going to put it another way so you really see how, how really uh, dangerous and actually stupid this is. The biggest problem I see is people taking violence and trying to shape violence to fit their martial art rather than taking their martial art to fit violence, okay? You're talking about double kicks, throwing double kicks, right? Kick to the body, kick to the head, right? And then a hook kick. You're talking about that, right? If you're talking about that, then you're not serious about violence. You're not serious about self-defense, okay? If you're still enamored in practicing Anthony Pettis, uh, the kick he did when he jumped and ran up on a cage and, and knocked Benson Henderson down, all right? If that is what you're practicing, you're not serious about self-defense. I've also said this before, and a lot of people didn't like it, but it is factual. You are entitled, Winston Churchill, I believe it was, who said, it was him who I believe uh, said, you're entitled to your own opinion, you're not entitled to your own facts. I've never seen more people get upset, right, with facts than the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fanatics. And I said fanatics, not people practicing it, but fanatics, okay? They are the most delusional the most delusional group of people I've ever seen, okay? And I will be talking about that also, all right? Because some people, I think, think that I don't approve of grappling. There couldn't be any, that couldn't be any far further from the truth. The reality is, is the idea that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or any kind of grappling is the end-all, be-all of self-protection. Now, to get back to what initially was the argument, if you were talking about laying on your back and you're spending hours and hours and hours in guard position, hours and hours and hours in the guard position, right, on your back looking for a submission, you're not serious about self-defense. What many of you are doing is you have a love affair with your martial art and you have taken that martial art and shaped self-defense to fit that. Well, this is how it goes. That's not how it goes. To give you another example, the popularity of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu came off of the Gracies, like Hicks and Gracie, fighting one-on-one -on, -one on a beach. Nobody jumping in it, no weapons involved. I'm going to say this again. The mystique of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu came with Hicks and Gracie fighting on the beach, right? Fighting on, on the beach, right? Against people, no weapons involved, no multiple opponents, or no multiple attackers. It also came from the UFC, Okay, uh, Hoist Gracie winning, all right, one on one. Okay, still, you know, bare knuckle and everything is fantastic. No weight classes. You can't, that's why I say nobody's Hoist Gracie. I don't care how much you train in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you're not going to be a Gracie, okay, because of the way they fought. That said, we're talking about one opponent, right, one opponent and no weapons. So, the issue is, are you interested in self-defense or are you interested in sport? That's the first thing you need to come to grips with. I had to come to grips with that very early because I'm five foot seven. My defense is great. I can teach defense 
quite possibly better than anybody else on social media. And the reason is because at 5'7", people have always headhunted with me. People have always tried to hit me in the head. Because up until the time, of, up until the time I was 16, I was of average height. After 16, I was an inch less than average height, two inches less than average height, on and on and on. Now I'm 5'7", I think the average height is like 5'11", in the United States. So the reality is this. I never had the luxury of fooling myself into thinking that I should, that I should, and it was safe to take my my martial art and 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 have and shape violence, the narrative of violence, to fit my martial art rather than the other way around. So you need to make up your mind what it is you want to do. So are you gonna are you going to leave alone these flip kicks? Are you willing to leave alone head kicks? Are you willing to leave alone low singles? Are you willing to leave alone shooting in for a takedown rather than getting a takedown from, from a standing position? Are you willing to leave alone this laying in the guard, laying in the guard looking for a submission? Are you willing to leave alone the idea that you should try to get somebody to tap out in a street fight? Are you willing to leave that alone? If you want to leave that alone, then you're on the right, you're on the right path. But you have to now, you have to distinguish between what it is you want to do. The people you train with are going to be less because a lot of your training partners are training with you because of the romanticism of the martial arts. The more exotic the martial art, the more they want to train with you. You can get a lot of people to come over there and lay inside your guard and go for some kind of submission. You can do that. But you're going to get less people who are more who are interested in you 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 throwing with somebody you 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 um you um bridging, putting your hands around their waist and biting into their stomach, and then when they when they yell, then turning them over. A a, a technique like that, you're going to get less people training with you. Why? Because it's real, but it's not as sexy. It's not as sexy. So the first thing you people need to do is you need to come to grips really. Because the great majority of you on social media, you are not interested at all in real self-defense. If you were laying in your guard, you're talking about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and going for a submission from the guard, you're not serious about self-defense. Because it is a lie that all fights end up on the ground. That is a complete and utter lie that was given to you to support Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Most fights end up in a clash. In a clash. Okay? Standing up, but not on the ground. Most fights do not end up on the ground. Usually when someone goes to the ground, someone, one person has been knocked down or knocked out. Someone has been knocked down or knocked out. Generally, that's how it works. It is a complete and utter lie that most fights end up on the ground. That was a ploy, a marketing ploy, given to you people, right? And the most people who sucked it up were white Americans, not white Europeans. White Americans are the ones that took that and didn't do any research. They took that and ran with it, and they're still saying that crap today. It's complete and utter bullshit. Most fights do not end up on the ground. When a fight, when a one person ends up on the ground, they have either been knocked out or knocked down. It is rare that a person gets knocked down and another person jumps down into the guard and they're grappling. Deliberately jumps down and wants to grapple with that person. That does not happen in fights. It's bullshit. Complete and utter bullshit. Okay? The best thing you can do is stop trying to lay down on the ground and grapple. What you need to do is if you fall, find yourself on the ground, working out ways that you can get back up and get on top of the individual. But laying in your guard is absolutely ridiculous. Chasing a submission is ridiculous. So how can you then take your sport martial art and change it into a street-worthy martial art or a street-worthy um, approach? You have to get over your love for your martial art and get real about what it is you are really trying to do. Because most of you have no interest whatsoever in real training for self-defense. Now, if you are serious about it, then you need to get good equipment. You need to get the best equipment that you can afford to allow you to train as authentically as possible without sustaining major injuries. Okay? And then what you do is you let someone attack you. They attack you with good material. You have good training gear, but they attack you. Headgear, mask, and everything. They attack you, okay? And you see, without it being scripted, what works, what doesn't work. Make notes of what works and what doesn't work. 
What can you use to get them down? What can you use to get them in a choke? What kind of punches work? What kind of kicks work? Okay. What kind of kicks end up with them grabbing your leg? What kind of kicks end up with them not being able, being able to grab, uh, grab your leg? Based on where you're kicking, maybe lower, or you're kicking fast, you're bringing your leg back, you're not dropping it down into your hands, and then take notes. Okay. So that's first. Get some good equipment. Have people come after you. One person first. Come after you in an unscripted manner. Okay. In an unscripted manner. Write down that particular, what particularly, what particularly worked. Have two people come after you at the same time. 50%. doesn't have to be 100%, so long as it's fast. As long, long as it's fast and unscripted, it doesn't have to be 100%. Let them come after you. Unscripted, 50% power, very fast, unscripted. Write down what works. Can you grapple with two people at the same time? No, you can't. You can put one in front of you to try to shield you, try to shield you from the other attacker, but you can't grapple two people at the same time. Okay, you're not going to do that. And in the video where I'm talking about grappling, I will point out why and why it's dangerous to even think you can. Okay, so have two people come after you. See what you can do. What works, what doesn't work. Okay, that's another thing. Take some kind of newspaper. Uh, shape it like it's a knife. Have someone come after you in an unscripted manner. See if you can get the knife out of their hand. See if you can get them down and, 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 and isolate that uh, offending arm to the point where they can't stab you. And then write down what it is that you did. Then take that pad, the pad that you have, that ed with everything that worked, and drill, devise drills to drill that thing over and over and over and over and over. And do not deviate and try to do a whole lot of other things. Because if you really want to get serious about your self-defense, you are using a very streamlined curriculum, streamlined uh, amount of things that work, very few things that work, right? And you're drilling them over and over until you do not have to think about them until they are, they are burned into your muscle memory and you can do them subconsciously, okay? That's basically it. I don't want to run out of, of filming time because I have a lot of things, a lot of videos to post or several other videos to do today for my new channel also. Uh, I have something I want to give away to you guys, and I'll be making a video on that, telling you what it is. Uh, 92 pages of my thoughts and things on boxing uh, with gloves and bare hands, whatever. But again, I, if you were serious about taking your street martial, uh, making a, uh, uh, making your martial art street worthy, you have to come to grips with what it is you really want to do, and get over your marriage, and 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 divorce your love of your particular martial art. Take what works. No, like Bruce Lee said, I was saying it, you know, there were people who were saying long before him, but take what works, right, and, uh, and uh, 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 leave off the rest. But the first thing you have to do is look at yourself, right, and get serious about whether you're romanticizing about martial arts or whether you're uh, uh, very serious about your self-defense. My name is Safe Carmen Walker, Encyclopedia of Martial Arts. I'll see you next video.